Good evening, YouTube friends, and it's good to be back here on YouTube with you. I want to thank everybody for the good response we had on our, our latest uh, unexplained occurrences in Memphis, Tennessee, concerning Elvis. If you haven't watched that one, you might want to go back and, and check it out. Yeah, a lot of people enjoyed watching that story from long ago. But I want to talk to you tonight about Alabama Dog Days. And these are Alabama Dog Days. Uh, the old tradition is that what, what are called Dog Days in Alabama start at the 4th of July and they run up until the end of August. So we're still in the Dog Days of, of summer here in Alabama. And the past few days, just yesterday, the, the high temperature in, in this area was around 104, 105 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So it's hot, sweltery weather. We're in the middle of a drought. It's very dry. It's been dry for weeks, months. Uh, already our trees, are, the leaves are turning yellow and brown and falling off from the ground. The grass is dying. It is really a tough weather time in, uh, in the south and in my part of Alabama. <laughs> it's very bad right now. But anyway, the dog days, I, I heard about dog days when and I spell it on the in intro there is D A Z E, and I, it is really Dog Days D A Y S. But anyway, I started hearing about Dog Days when I was just a, a young youngster, very young. And people back in those days had very strong traditions or very strong beliefs, superstitions even about these days of summer. Like I said, that ran in July and August. And I was always told that the the name Dog Days came from the fact that that was the the uh, most likely time in the year when there would be mad dogs. We called them mad dogs back in those days. We were always told as children to be be sure and stay away from those those mad dogs, uh, dogs with rabies. I think is a modern name. Back in those days, we we feared dogs with frothing mouths and. And we were told from July and August during the dog days that any dog, that, a strange dog, or even their own dogs that came up were to be suspect. And if you ever saw a dog with a, a frothing, a white, foamy mouth, to be sure and stay away. And the, the, the belief was if you were bitten that at that time of the year by a mad dog, that you would surely die. You, may, you might have a chance some other time during the year, but during dog days, if you were bitten by a rabid, mad dog, you were a goner. So we we lived in fear for those two months in July and, and August of, of mad dogs, and thus, I guess, the dog days of summer. But that wasn't all there was to it. We had to be very careful. We went barefooted a whole lot when I was a kid. Matter of fact, from the time school was out until school started back, we got our new school shoes in the fall. We just about went barefooted unless maybe we went to church and we had to wear shoes to church or maybe went visiting and we had to wear shoes visiting. But around, uh, around the home and around the farm, uh, we went barefooted a whole lot. During dog days, we were cautious about uh, ever stepping on an object that might uh, scratch or, or injure our feet, especially something that did a puncture wound. And again, the belief then was if you were injured during dog days of summer, you would you would get an infection. It would be terribly hard to to get it cured, and you'd probably die of that. And the most feared thing, and back in those days they call it lockjaw tetanus is a modern name for it, but uh, we were warned of lockjaw. If you were ever out during dog days and stepped on the thorn and stuck a thorn in your, your foot, uh, which was a deep puncture wound, and there were a lot of thorns around the farms and everything, uh, the chances were that you would have lockjaw. And I remember my parents telling me to, to make you more aware that you should be careful during that time of the year. If you get lockjaw, they'll have to knock your teeth out and they'll you'll have to suck through a straw soup and and liquids just to live so you be careful you don't want to get locked job because it's a very bad thing of course tetanus is a bad thing a serious thing uh, and, and we were warned uh, this is the worst time of the year during dog days you don't want to get hurt during dog days 
But you know, I've done a little reading about that and about the, those beliefs, and they had a little foundation in the early days of the South and in, in of Alabama, even this region, along the creeks and rivers, and especially in the bayous and down along the coast. And it's hot in here. <laughs> and down along, the, you you've seen all the old Southern pictures now. That, I want to bring that up. Uh, most of the old Southern uh, pictures must have been made during dog days, because everybody in Southern pictures at one time sweated. They just sweated, and they'd always have a white handkerchief, and they would they would wipe the sweat. And that's that's a stereotype of the South that everybody in the South is sweaty. And uh, <laughs> and I suppose that's right. When it's 107 degrees outside, and the humidity goes up to 80, 90, 95 percent, uh, you get sweaty. <laughs> of course, nowadays we have. We have air conditioning. Now, I'm just putting this on. I'm in an air conditioned room here. The the lights are a little bit hot, but uh, th this is a prop. This is for effects. It, dog days, it sure is hot here in Alabama. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, we had to be real careful during those days, and I think the reason for it was uh, during the hot summertime in in the early days of Alabama, with all the swamps, mosquitoes, uh, stagnated water, not knowing how to control everything. The worst season of the year for typhoid fever, which was deadly to a lot of people, a lot of people died of typhoid in the, in the south in the, in the earlier days, was during this hot part of the summer. And I think that's where a lot of that fear came down to, especially my parents that go back, uh, were born in the earlier part of the 1900s and lived through a lot of those terrible times when disease was still very bad. And I can even remember, I was born in 1945, I can even remember having fear all summer long because of polio, before polio vaccine. Every summer there would be one or two, even in a small community, there would be one or two children come down with polio and be paralyzed. And, and I always dreaded the thought, of the, I was terrified of the thought of an iron lung. That At those times that's what they did with uh, polio children, polio victims. Uh, they lost the uh, control of their lungs and they put them inside this chamber that actually breathed for them. They had a big mirror up on the front of the, this chamber so you could you could see by you were laying down of course and you could look in the mirror and see around the room and that was always one of my childhood fears that I would catch polio and I would be, be put in a, an iron lung. And that went along with this time of the year. That always happened in in the summer. In, in, uh, it took a little bit out of the joy of being out of school in the summertime because of the fears of, we didn't have, when I was growing up, fear of typhoid, but we definitely had fear of polio up until, I guess, the mid-50s. And I, I can still remember going to, we, at, here we got them at the local, at a local elementary school, the sugar cubes with the vaccine, the salt vaccine on it for polio. And almost, it seemed like overnight, that fear went away. Uh, what a wonderful drug that was that, that people were able to be immunized against a terrible crippling disease of polio and of course in this country you never hear it of it again I know in the third world countries it's still a, a bad problem I'm gonna need to cool down here some more I know it's still a bad problem but uh, it's gone around here but anyway that's dog days uh, a fearful time in uh, in the south not so much anymore and you know, what I'm wondering is, in other parts, I know in other parts of the country it may not even be considered if, if those parts of the of the U.S. don't get this hot and sultry as it does in the South, and it really does get hot and sultry. Yeah. Those of you that uh, come to South Tube, even in September, will, will feel the effects of the humid, hot uh, southern climate if you've not been here before. But I, I wonder in the rest of the country uh, that you have something like, or in the rest of the world, uh, Certainly, if you have something like dog days, when there's certain times of the year that by tradition and superstition you had to fear those times of the year. But those times here in the south were July, August, the dog days of summer in Alabama. And tomorrow, it's supposed to be 102 again. Wow.